to the Suspense Squad, where authors interview authors. Today, we have my Sunrise sister, Lisa Phillips, with us. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> and we're talking about her new release, Allegiance, that is part of her new series, Benson First Responders. Yeah. Do you have a cover you can take? Ooh, oh, you got the whole big oh, thing. Wow. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's a big. Yep. It's a hand cutie. <laughs> yeah. She yeah. always has the handsome men on her. Yes. You. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. well, be, and mostly it's because, so this series, this series right here, uh, <laughs> is the one where, that I was talking about last time where we hired the cover model. And so she's going to be on the front of every single book in the, her series. And then, so for this one, I was like, okay, instead of a lady, let's do a bunch of dudes. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. So, Did you yeah. hire him? Judy. No, this one's just like a pre-made like stock yeah. photo. So yes. That's okay. He's mm -hmm. still, he's, he was somebody's photography subject, wasn't he? <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so yeah mr hunk for that one thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> that. do you have a back cover copy that you could read us yes i do big city crime small town heroes a dead man emt freya olson has lost her faith but not her drive to save those who need her help when the past that her family left behind after her mother's death shows up in benson Freya lands on the target list as well, but things aren't what they seem and Freya's loyalty will be pushed to the limit. A disgraced cop hiding a dangerous secret. Police detective Lucas Westbrook has served his whole career under the shadow of his mother's betrayal. Only his faith keeps him from crossing the line or becoming the cop everyone assumes he is. This time, there's no escaping the connection between his deepest pain and the case on his desk. Caught in a tangled web between friend and foe, Lucas will protect Freya for as long as it takes to close the case and find out what could be between them. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's start with our questions. Hope. Okay, well, Lisa, it's great to see you again. Mm -hmm. And I know you have written so many amazing stories, but let's go back to the beginning and tell us about how you actually got started in writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so I actually is in my bio on Amazon that at my Bible college graduation, the dean of the Bible college said, this is Lisa, she's a writer. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so I literally had no idea. And so it was like, God was just like, okay, now let's talk about this. And so, yeah, I really, I had no clue. And we, I married my husband the like a couple months later. And then after that looked into the Christian writers guild and got into the, that took their courses. Uh, that was some of the first Christian writers conferences that I went to um, and really just started learning and kind of exploring what it looks like and how it works and, you know, developing craft. And then 2012, I entered a love inspired suspense speed dating pitch. And it was like a um, chat room where you go in the chat room and you just paste your hundred word pitch. And then she's like, yes, send me the full manuscript, send me a proposal or no, thank you. And it was like immediately, yes, send me the whole book. And so that was my first um, Love Inspired Suspense double agent. And that came out in 2014. And then I started indie publishing the same year and then just kind of went back and forth between the two since then. So, wow, that is so awesome. I love that. And Pappy. Well, you just alluded to my question, which was, I was very, I'm very curious as how you balance the love inspired and your um, indie and how you make that work. Mm. Yeah, I think in initially it was very much like my indie stuff needs to take a backseat to love inspired suspense, even though I was doing both at the same time, I was very much like had an agreement with my editor. If you sent me something, I stop what I'm doing. I do that. And then I go back to my indie stuff 
when you know my line edits are done or you know between books and things like that so and it just kind of helps to do something different like if you work on one thing and then it's nice to write something slightly different between because I feel like you kind of get in this you know almost like in a rut um, or you just need to tackle something new so I think it helped in terms of marketing because when my indie stuff was coming out, I had Love Inspired Suspense books on pre-order. And so I think it gave me more visibility for my indie books. And then I just, you know, that was kept going and it was steady and it was, you know, two or three books a year for several years. And then, you know, building up indie series really helped me figure out what kind of books I want to write and then just really getting a handle on series and then getting my pace faster in terms of like my output of how fast like my first indie series it took like two or three years to get all five books out (laughs) and then last year I all I had all five books came out in one year and they were like August, September, October, November, December. So wow. just building it up and, you know, working on productivity and focus and things like that. So, yeah. Well, I was oh. encouraged when you said it took two to three years. I was like, okay, maybe I could do this. And then you, went, <laughs> <laughs> then you changed you know, it. <laughs> a lot of people do. You know, there's always in the indie author groups I'm in, there's always somebody that's like, can I make a career on one book a year? And it's like, you have to have a strategy, but yeah, it's possible. There's people that make a career on poetry, which you wouldn't think necessarily would sell that well, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cool. And Shannon? Well, speaking of marketing, since that's a great segue to what I wanted to ask you, what are some of the best marketing tips that you have found and used to sell your, probably your indie books the most, I guess, Mm -hmm. the ones Mm -hmm. where I'm most interested Yeah, I think for indies, probably one of the biggest things is buying a good cover. So, you know, I've had some hit or miss covers and I've even have a series that I designed myself just to see if I could. But then I kind of realized that even if I can, is it a good use of my time? And so, you know, you can get covers for a range of different prices, but if you can get you know, a genre appropriate cover. It's probably the best marketing that you can do because that's the first and main thing that everybody sees when they see your book. So what about like your tagline and your back cover copy? Would that be like the next thing that people? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's probably the next thing down um, because it is such a huge selling point. I mean, a description can, you know, get somebody to just click one click by that book and and I also you know a lot of books I'm like I read the description and it's like a hard I can already tell it's a no (laughs) mostly because I don't like first person so if I read the description and the description's in first person I'm like nope um (laughs) yeah and and that's just a different skill than writing a book even I've been doing that with my sunrise authors I made them write their own book description because it's a skill and it's a valuable skill to learn even if it's you use it for proposals rather than you know descriptions on indie books it's you know you have to exercise these things to get better at them and to build up those strengths so yeah so for sure the cover it needs to fit your genre and it needs to, as much as you can, look like the books that you're, you know, essentially competing with. It looks like it fits in this market with these other books. Um, and then for anyone, not just the indies, it's a newsletter. And I would say build it slowly by being consistent. I did several years ago, though, I had a jump in newsletter subscribers when I had a book bub on book one in a series and then I gave away book two for newsletter subscription and then that really helped build um, my newsletter even though you know it was a free book and it was a book that they could have bought but they got it for free for signing up so just build it build it consistently build it slowly and then um, treat those subscribers like they're your core community of readers because that's who they are. I try to give them everything first. And then just you you want to cultivate a community of readers who get excited every time you put a book out. 
because they know they're going to love it because they love everything you write. Because those people are your like Insta buy, the people that will talk about your books everywhere, regardless of if you ask them to <laughs> or mm-hmm. you do a street team. So yeah, just treat treat your readers like friends and, you know, grow that relationship as much as you can. So touching on covers, I'm going to extend this question a little bit. Mm-hmm. Touching on covers. Do you find that if you put people on the front, that that's the best way to go? Cause I've seen, I see some covers with people and I I'm attracted to when they have like a model on the front, that kind of pulls mm-hmm. me in. I didn't know if that was in your marketing research that you've done. Have you found that that's kind of the understanding that if you have people on the front or no um, people? I think it change? depends on the genre. Like I wouldn't do no people for romance, but I wouldn't, I would have a cover with no people on it for a thriller. um so I think it does kind of depend and especially like romantic suspense I really feel like you need a cover I feel like the reader will make a connection with the book with the person on the cover and I try to as much as I can have the cover before I write the book um so it's the hardest thing thinking (laughs) up titles and so some of my books you can read them and then be like well did that really have anything to do with the title and I'm like don't overthink it like I got the cover like four months ago and I just decided what the book's about so that that's the hardest part for me is figuring out the title but then yeah so if I can have you know like if I can see what he looks like before I write the book it kind of gives me a clue into parts of who he is, you know, not just like, oh, he's blonde or you get the cover and your entire book, the guy had brown hair and then you have to go back and fix it. Like, (laughs) oh, I need to make you have the same hair color, but it just, you know, there's a mood to him and, you know, Mm -hmm. this cover and this cover is almost like a brand in itself that kind of gives me, you know, a mood and a, um sometimes even like a theme for the book so I try to as much as I can have the cover made before I write the book never thought of it doing and never thought of doing it that way that's Mm -hmm. that's yeah because sometimes like I don't describe characters a lot and so if I can see their picture then I can picture them in my head and so, you know, or sometimes you get a cover and you're like, oh, that's not what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I had one, one of the last chance county books. It was supposed to be a Christmas short, shorter story. And then I get the cover and I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's not a Christmas short story. That's like a whole book in itself. And my cover guy messages me and he's like, what do you think? And I was like, shush I'm having ideas <laughs> and it was like I got a whole plot just from looking at this cover like wow that's not what I thought it was going to be I know what that is so yeah it helps me have ideas I think so is that the one that was like a hundred thousand words and I was trying to read it over Christmas yeah. break and it had other points of view in it <clears throat> I'm like oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we were doing we were doing a video thing on Facebook live and she sends me the book and I'm like, okay, I'll read it. And I have like five days and I'm looking at this and I'm going, it's a hundred thousand words. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I get a little long. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> but when you, you can do that. All right, Darlene, let's talk series. Go for it. Okay. Well, it was great seeing you at ACFW, Lisa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I'm um, excited about your new series. So I want you to tell us a little bit about it. Like, uh, where did you get the idea? What's it about? Did, will it evolve the same characters? That type of thing. So <laughs> this, I'm going to try and not make this a long story, but so it takes place in the world of Last Chance County, even though it's not in Last Chance County. So my original 10 book Last Chance County series that then spurred a private security series and then that spurred a series that's called last chance downrange which mm-hmm. is um a plot element of um the original series called the accountant's office which is kind of like a private um witness protection so that last chance downrange takes place in benson washington and so it's an all new location even though it's the same world and then it introduced you know some police some 
uh, there's firefighters, FBI. There's a tiny little FBI office in the town. And then that series had two EMTs in it. And so this book is the first, the girl EMT, and then he's a police detective. And then the guy EMT, her partner is book two that comes out in December. And he is the stepbrother of the main character from my novel for our Sunrise Last Chance County series. So it goes Allegiance and then Blackout is out in December and it's, um, and yeah, so he's stepbrother. So that'll be kind of like a prequel to our Sunrise um, Last Chance County series. So that comes out next year. So it's kind of like living in the same universe mm -hmm. and tying everything together and getting to like pull from different places. So it's a lot of fun. When does the first book come out for the Sunrise? Um, so we're doing our cover reveals October 17th. And then the first book, which is the one I wrote comes out, I think the 31st of January. And then the rest of them are April, June, and September. So yeah, cool. be a lot of fun. Bye.